Hello developer friends and welcome to another video about list models and list view and QML. Last time we met, we talked about the basics. In this video, we're going to take our existing knowledge and build on that. Today we're going to take a look at how we can dynamically populate data into our list model. And to do that, we're going to be making a contact list. What you're currently looking at is some starter code. We have a text object and a component all completed that calls a function when the page is initialized. This fetch function will act as if we're getting data back from an API. If we look at the data, we see an array of objects with a name and phone number. I'll quickly run the app just so we know what our starting point looks like. First, we want to create a container for our list view. I'll be anchoring the top of our container to our header text and anchoring the bottom to the bottom of the page. I'll also do something similar with the left and right of the container. We'll go ahead and give our container a color of red to make it easier to understand our boundaries. Next, inside our container, we'll add a list model object and give it an ID of contacts model. It's important to practice good naming conventions because this is how we'll reference our object later. Under our list model, we'll create a list view. Because our list view is inside our container, we can set our anchor fill to parent and skip some of the styling. We'll also tell our list view to reference our model. Now, to create our delegate. If some of these concepts are foreign or you simply need a refresher, please watch our first video where we go over the basics of list view or reference the official QML documentation. Inside our delegate, we'll add an image object, and the image we'll use is a basic icon from our assets directory. We'll wrap up the styling, and to test what we've done so far, we'll set our model to 3 and run the app. Next, we'll add a text object that will eventually display a name, but for the time being, we'll set a static value. Under that, we'll add another text object that will eventually display a phone number. We'll now move on to our fetch function and start working on populating the list model with data. Under our array, we'll call a function that passes the response array as a parameter. Now, to create that populate list model function, Scrolling up, we want to make sure our list view is referencing our list model's ID. Scrolling back down, we then want to iterate over the parameter being passed to the function with the foreach method. Inside our method, we want to reference our list model ID, which is contacts model. Here, we want to call the append method on our contacts model and pass an object of contact name and contact number.
I'll even format the object so it's easier to understand. Let's run our app and see what happens. We see that we're populating our list model. However, because we're not referencing our contact name and contact number, nothing's happening. Let's change that. We want to go to our contact name text object and set the text property to contact name and then do the same for our contact number. Now if we run our app, we see names and their respective phone numbers. Let's take this one step further and clean up some of this styling. And there you go, we have a contacts list. That wraps up today's video. Drop a like if this was helpful. Subscribe so you never miss a video. And make sure you check out some of the other cool videos we've uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.